So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Inkscape version 48 to create a vintage style logo with a scratch texture over it, similar to what you see here on my screen. And I'm going to show you how to create this same exact thing right here. Uh, the first thing you'll have to do is download the Beebus font. I've included a link to that to the, in the description. So once you have that downloaded, go ahead and open up a new document and we'll get started. So this should be your view when you first start. The first thing we're going to want to do is set up our document for work. So we'll come over here to the uh, Line and Distribute Objects menu. We'll open that up. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from that list. And then come over here to the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradient, and Stroke menu. We're going to click that up to open up that menu. And then we're going to go up to File, Document Properties. We're going to uncheck these two boxes and then close that menu out. And then we're going to go to View and make sure you have custom selected and then go to zoom and we're going to zoom in at 100% so select zoom one to one. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is create a circle so come over here to your circle tool let's click on that and let's hold control and click and drag on the screen to create a perfect circle sort of like that. Okay now let's turn that red and then come over here to opacity and slide that in half you want to have that at around 50%. Now we're going to come up to the Fill tab. We're going to click the X button to turn that off. And then we're going to come over to the Stroke tab. We're going to click the blue button to turn that on. And then we're going to come over to the Stroke Style tab, and we're going to give that a three-point stroke. So we'll type in three and hit Enter. Now let's come back to the Arrow tool. Let's click on that. Let's right-click on this circle and go to Duplicate. We'll come over to the Stroke tab. We'll turn that off. And we'll come over to the Fill tab and turn that on. And then while holding Control and Shift in your keyboard, click and drag this bottom arrow right here and bring it inward about that much. Let's say about that much. Okay, and so the next thing we'll do is we'll right click on this and we'll go to Duplicate and we'll turn that red and then hold Control and Shift in your keyboard again and let's click and drag this into about, we'll make that about that big. Now let's right click on this and go to Duplicate again and then holding while holding Shift in your keyboard, Click on that larger black circle in the background, and let's go to Path, Difference. Now let's take this red circle right here in the center. Let's click on that and hold Control and Shift, and let's bring that in about that much. Try to make it about the same width between the large black border as it is between the large black border and the small black border. Okay. Then after that, we're going to click on this stroke over here, which is our little border, and we're going to convert that from a stroke into an object. So we're going to go to Path, Stroke to Path. Okay, and the next thing we'll do is we'll create a box. So let's go to our Create Squares and Rectangles button and click on that. And let's hold Control on your keyboard and click and drag to create a perfect square. Kind of like that. And then we're going to come up to Path, and we're going to click Object to Path to make that into an object that we can edit. And then let's come over here to the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes button and click on that. Now using your mouse, click and drag over these left two nodes right here to select them and come up to this button on the very left that says insert new nodes into selected segments and we're going to click that once. Now let's click and drag over this center node right here so we just have that one selected and let's hold the control key in the keyboard and click and drag this in just a little bit just to about there. Now let's come back over to the arrow and take that and let's uh, click and drag this up here and let's hold the shift key on the keyboard and click on the red circle and let's center that on the horizontal axis and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. The next thing we'll do is we'll click on this little object that we just created. We're going to right click that and we're going to go duplicate and we're going to come up here to where it says flip selected, selected objects horizontally. We're going to click that once and then while holding the control key on your keyboard click and drag this second object out to about here. And now holding shift on your keyboard click the first one so you have them both selected and let's go to path union. And then let's hold shift on the keyboard and click on the red circle in the middle. And let's center that up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. Now let's click on just this, this border in the background here. And let's right click that and go to duplicate. And we're going to go to path, break apart, and then path, union. And then while holding the shift key, let's click on those little ribbons we just created so you have them both selected. And let's go to path, difference. And then while holding the shift key again, click on that outer border. So you have that and the ribbon selected and let's go to path union. 
Okay, now the next thing we're gonna, do, we're gonna wanna do is create some text. So let's come over to the text tool and click on that and bring the cursor onto the canvas and just click on it until the cursor comes up. And I'm just, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna write vintage. And then I'm gonna click again over here <clears throat> just to create more text. And I'm gonna write logo. And then we can come back up to the arrow over here. Let's click on the arrow and let's click and drag over the both of these. And let's go up here to the text editor. It's a button with a T on it. You can click on that. And let's find the font you recently downloaded called Beebus. And let's click on that and go to apply. And let's X out of the text editor. And what we're gonna do now is let's click off of that to deselect them both and click on just, just this word vintage right here and come up here to the lock icon. Let's turn that on. And then whatever width it is on your screen, just click and drag over that and press Control and C on your keyboard to copy that. And then we're gonna click on the word logo and we're gonna come back up here to the width and we're gonna erase that and hit Control V to paste that in because we want those two words to be the same width. And once they're the same width, you can click and drag over them both and we can center them up. We can align them on the left edges like that. Click off of them and deselect them and click on just the word logo and hold control and click it drag click and drag it up So it's just beneath the word vintage right there Now let's click and drag over both of them. Let's group them together with this button and Then hold shift in your keyboard to click the red circle and Let's center that up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and let's deselect everything Now let's click on just the wording right here and hold control and shift and let's resize this. Let's make it so it's just a little, try to eyeball it and make it just a little shorter than uh, these little ribbons on the side here. Sort of like that. And now we're going to create another rectangle. Uh, actually, we'll use the Bezier pen to do this. Let's, let's go to the Bezier pen and come up here to where it says snap to custom nodes. We're going to turn that on. And we're going to snap it to this corner, bring it over here, snap it to that corner and click, bring it down here, snap it to that corner and click, and bring it over here, snap it to that corner and click, and then bring it up to the starting point so we create a rectangle. Now let's come back up here to the snap to custom nodes, let's turn that off, and let's go to our arrow, and then hold shift and click on these red, this red circle in the middle. Let's go to path, difference. Then we'll go to path, break apart and let's click off of that to deselect everything. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a star. So let's come over here to the star button and make sure up here in the input you have these values set. You have the star button selected. We want five corners. Spoke ratio is 0 0.365. Rounded and randomized are both set to zero. And once you have those inputs set, just come down here and hold control and just click and drag to create a star kind of like that. And once you've created that star, we can go back to our arrow, click on that. And let's click on this a second time to bring up our rotation handles. And let's rotate this just so it's upright. We want those corners going perfectly up and down like that. And once that's set, let's right click on this and go to duplicate. And let's bring it off over here. And let's click on it a second time to get our scaling handles back. And we're going to hold control and then click and drag one of these handles just to make it a little smaller. We're going to make it about that much smaller. And then let's right click on this star and go to duplicate and let's bring this over here and then we'll click and drag over the whole thing all three of them and we're going to center them up on the horizontal axis and then we're going to come down here to distribute and we're going to click this button once that says make horizontal gaps between objects equal we're going to click that once just so it spaces them out evenly and then we'll go to path union and let's turn this blue for now just so we can see what we're doing and then with that still selected, hold down your shift key and click on the top half of this red circle. And let's center that up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's select just the stars right here and hold control and shift in your keyboard. And let's scale them in. Let's scale them into about there. And then let's right click them and go to duplicate. And then come up here to where it says flip selected objects vertically. We're going to click that to flip it, flip it vertically and then hold shift and click on the bottom half of the circle and let's center that up on the horizontal axis. Okay, so once you've done that, let's click and drag over the entire thing and let's bring the opacity all the way up. Let's slide that slider all the way to the right. Okay, then we're going to deselect everything. What we'll do next is let's click on the on the uh, these little side these little side pieces right here and then click on this red 
uh, circle and then this red half of the circle. And we're going to make that um, sort of like a dull shade of blue. I'm going to make that something like that. Uh, yeah, I think that works. And then let's click on the stars. Click the first star and then hold shift and click the second set of stars. And let's turn them white. And then let's click on this inner black border right here and then hold shift and click on the wording. And we're going to make this a dull shade of red, sort of like that. I think this, this color palette right here works well for a vintage look. And then we're going to click and drag over the whole thing and we're going to group it together. And then let's click on it a second time to bring up these rotation handles. And let's just click and drag it off to the side a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a tilt, kind of like that. Now the next thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to apply our texture. And I've included a link in the description below the video to um, where you can find that texture. Just go to that texture, right click it, go to save as, and save it to a folder where you can easily access it. And once you're ready, once you have that saved, we're going to come up here, we're going to go to file, and we're going to go to import. And you're going to find where you save that uh, scratch texture. For me, it's right there, scratch.png. We're going to click open to open that. And it's going to ask if you want to link or embed it. You're going to want to embed it. So make sure you have that selected and click OK. And this is what it should look like right here. Now let's lower this one selection. Lower it one step by clicking that button. And let's hold Shift and click on the logo so we have them both selected. And let's center them up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then let's deselect everything. Then we're going to take just this image right here, click on that, and then hold Control and Shift. And let's shrink this down so that it's just a little bit bigger than the logo. And then we'll raise that to the top by clicking that button. And then let's click and drag over the whole thing and let's go to Object, Mask, Set. And that's going to give our logo a um, sort of like a worn out, scratched, aged kind of look. So that's how you can do that with Inkscape. So if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll be glad to help you out. Thank you for watching.